Now we've got four new graphics processors this month and I wanted to mention them discussing some of their strong points, perhaps making some recommendations for use cases. This video is sponsored by 4D Dig. If you need a one click photo repair, enhancement and super resolution solution, 4D Dig's photo repair allows you to recover corrupt images, denoise using AI and enlarge photos using AI powered super resolution. Pick up photo repair using the link below and get a 30% discount today. Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the new graphics cards from Nvidia and AMD that came out uh, this month of June 2023. Oh, we're going to start off with the latest offerings from AMD, the renowned maker of processors and graphics cards. The, the new cards are the Radeon Pro W7900 and W7800. These are designed for the most demanding of professional workloads. Uh, the cards are not for the faint of uh, heart, nor for the uh, light of wallet. They're meant for those who seek the ultimate performance in rendering, animation, video editing, and other creative tasks. Uh, but they're compatible with most desktop computers, uh, but more really designed for the workstations. Now, what really caught my eye about these was when I saw the benchmarks for their raw performance. They can compete with some of the best gaming cards out there, and that's pretty exceptional. Now, when we take a look at the raw data, let's take a look at the raw data for the 7900, the more powerful, 48 gigabytes of VRAM. That is equaling the best out there in the industry. Um, we've got GDDR6 memory, we've got uh, triple slot design uh, and that's going to be harboring this 295 watt uh, TGP beast. That is a huge amount of power to make this thing work. It also supports AV1 encode and decode. So just last year uh, it was just Intel who had AV1 encode and decode, uh, the benefit of competition. But you know, competition is good like that. Uh, what they're saying with this new card is that it has 1.5 more memory than the, the previous generation. And uh, also we are looking at the first workstation with DisplayPort 2.1. So DisplayPort 2.1, I like the way that they've actually shown this, like it's three times the throughput of uh, 1.4a. So that's nice to see. That's nice to see. It's nice to see a very simple indication of how much more uh, you can do with 2.1. Uh, and obviously, uh, this gives us up to 8K 60 FPS uncompressed. Uncompressed. So, um, other things that are happening with this GPU is really that they're kind of copying NVIDIA in some ways. They've got AI accelerators. Uh, we know. Nvidia have got their tensor cores and they've got ray tracing, so they're kind of co they're copying Nvidia, and that's not bad. I mean, it's 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 nice to see good features being included. They're copying Intel, obviously, with the AV1 encode and decode. And again, that's, that's that's a nice thing. Um, they've there's also a somewhat less powerful 7800 one, uh, with 32 gigabytes of uh, VRAM, 260 watts, still fairly power hungry. And uh, the 32 gigabyte one is compared with the RTX A5500. Uh, that one is a 24 gigabyte one. Usually I find with uh, with AMD that the more memory doesn't give you, you know, it doesn't do that much more. You know, Nvidia's lower memory usually somehow outperforms the higher memory. But in certain AI situations, the higher memory might actually be a positive thing. So that's an area where benchmarking would be perhaps the best option to see whether you can get performance uh, boost from the higher memory. The thing is, NVIDIA have invested so much in machine learning and in artificial intelligence that in almost all cases, it makes more sense to go with NVIDIA for machine learning use cases. Uh, what caught my eye about this new GPU was really the raw performance, uh, the 7800. This is the Passmark uh, total performance chart. So we've got W7800, we've got the Radeon Pro W7900. They are up there with the very best. 
um, uh, the 40, 80, 40, 90. Look, there's a there's an inversion with the 40, with, with, with the 7800 being more powerful. That is due to a sampling uh, limitation. There's a very small number of samples. I looked previously at some of the individual baselines for these samples, some of them for the 7800 coming very close to the RTX 4080 typical score, uh, and some for the 7900 coming uh, above that, above the typical score of the RTX 4080. So it does depend on how your system is configured, but this is a really nice ranking for Radeon Pro workstation cards. It's very rare to see, I've never seen it before, uh, for, for the workstation cards to be competing with the top gaming cards. This is not a measure of their uh, workstation performance. It's a measure of the overall performance, including uh, their gaming potential. We can take a look at another GPU that came out much less impressive. This is the RX 7600. It has a very decent TDP of 165 watts. Very energy efficient, not a bad score for, for, for that level of uh, energy uh, consumption. It is, however, a PCIe 4 X8 card. It's an X8 card. We've got potential for X16, but they're making these X8 cards. I don't know. Maybe they, they, they're looking at this perhaps as a, as, a, as a streaming card, as a card you would have in the second slot on your PCIe. Uh, on a PCIe 4 board, it's not going to be significantly poor, but on a PCIe 3 board, you're going to lose 5-10% of performance because it's an X8 card rather than an X16 card. And that's something I researched quite recently. A number of people have brought that up in the comments before, uh, and I wanted to take a look to see where the research stood. And definitely there is a slight performance droop that you get if you go to PCIe 3. So if you pair this with the 5700G, you're going to get a 5-10% uh, drop in performance due to this being an x8 uh, 8 gigabytes of uh, vram that's not bad at 250 dollars but uh th th this is not got very good gaming reviews hopefully that will help to keep the price down because i think this will probably be a decent entry level general purpose gpu uh, the rtx 4060 ti also came out this one is much more powerful at 22199 this guy once again, is PCIe Gen 4 X8. It's a very decent TDP of 160 watts for a card this powerful to have that energy consumption. That's excellent. I've seen one of these cards, not necessarily the one that I would recommend, I've seen one that runs at zero decibels. In other words, no fans, no fan noise. That's very impressive for a card uh, this powerful. Uh, 8 gigabytes of VRAM. There's another one coming out with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. We've already discussed that one, and that's the one I would recommend for artificial intelligence. Uh, that artificial intelligence does require quite a lot of VRAM. Now, talking of artificial intelligence and VRAM, these are some designs that I was working on inside of Stable Diffusion, and you can get you can put together designs like these in a couple of minutes in stable diffusion there's a course at the moment that i would recommend if you want to learn how to do this one hour you should be up and running and able to do fantastic things uh, i'll link to that course it's on discount at the moment for those people who want to learn a stable diffusion now if you are purchasing the rx 7600 there is a special offer at the moment which is to get the resident evil 4 with the graphics card that is something that is available on selected cards so if you're on amazon you've got to look for the for the cards where it says this and uh, if it doesn't say that you're not going to get anything I'll link to a page where all of the ones that are currently on special offer uh, with the resident evil uh, i'll link to that page uh, in the description below but guys that's going to be it for this one if you're planning to upgrade your pc for for Amazon Prime Day. Uh, I will have some more suggestions coming along. So I will see you in those later videos. Guys, that is it for now. I'll see you later.